already vanquished. Vanquished. So, oh, Mr. Claus, the cat who lives at the apartment building, just attacked Mr. George Buckman. As we finished the chapter where the philosopher Dr. Meacham was speaking to Flora. <gasps> Vanquished. And so this chapter is in cartoon form, just like the Incandisto book. Fortunately, a superhero was now present. Sunny side up is what the superhero says. The cat lands on George Buckman. The superhero lands on the cat. The superhero pull, pulls the cat off. The cat digs his claws into Mr. George Buckman's head. Oh. You see the B-L-O-O-D? The Super. superhero lifts the cat up. That is one large cat. And he throws the cat down the hall. For the love of Pete, holy bagumball. So Flora is known for saying, for the love of Pete. And Dad is known for saying, holy bagumba. And look at the cat. That's car is so strong. Vanquished. And the superhero was enormously inordained, inordinately pleased with himself. He felt immensely powerful. He felt like writing a poem. All right. If I had my I would freeze it. Oh, there it is. All right. So I will leave it on this. So this is my background. Yes. And that's. I like your background. You like my background? Yeah. Chapter 41. I promise. Hmm. They were in the car. Flora's father's hands were in on the steering wheel at 10 and 2 o'clock. What happened? All of a sudden we're in the car? So we must have had a nice visit, right? Yeah. Because they were having a nice visit. Flora was sitting up front and Ulysses' head was out the window. They were heading back to Flora's mother's house in spite of Flora's protesting. We have to go back, said her father. We have to return at regular sun Saturday afternoon time. We have to act natural. Act very natural. Flora wanted to object, but she could read the writing on the wall, or rather she could read the words that hovered above her and her father and the squirrel. So. Writing on the wall is a figure of speech. It's like when your mom comes home from someplace and the house is a mess and she suddenly is upset. The writing is on the wall that she's upset that the house is a mess. She doesn't have to say, it, you know it. Or your dad just cleans the car and it's beautiful and it's shiny and a bird comes around and Ew. And he's like, man, and he's upset. And you know why he's upset, because he just worked hard to clean that car. So you know the writing is on the wall that, yeah, anyhow. <laughs> Destiny could no longer be forestalled. The arch nemesis must be faced. Who's the arch nemesis? Mom. Mom. She's the one who is angry and wants the squirrel to be and Kill it. and buried in the ground. Holy Bagumba, said her father. His right ear was wrapped in a huge amount of gauze. His head looked lopsided. Holy unanticipated occurrences. A squirrel vanquished a cat. 
He shook his head and smiled. And now it's time for another battle, said Flora. Everything will be fine, said her father. So you say, said Floral. And it started to rain. Ulysses pulled back his head inside the car. He looked up at Flora, and the sight of the little whiskered face calmed her somehow. She smiled at him, and the squirrel sighed happily and curled in her lap. When I was a little girl in Blundermeekin, Dr. Meacham had said to Florida when they were in the, leaving the apartment 267, we wondered always if we would see each other again. Each day was uncertain, so to say goodbye to someone was uncertain. You, would you see them again? Who could say? Blundermeekin was a place of dark secrets, unmarked graves, terrible curses, trolls were everywhere. Five. Four. I promise to always turn back towards you, said Flora. She whispered the words again now to the squirrel. I promise to always turn back towards you. She put a finger on Ulysses' chest. <gasps> His tiny heart beating sent out a message that felt like, I promise, I promise, I promise. I promise. Three. Hearts were the strangest thing. Pop? Yes, her father said. Can I feel your heart? Oh, my heart? Sure. And then, for the first time ever, George Buckman took both his hands off the steering wheel while the car was in motion. <gasps> he opened his arms wide. Flora gently moved Ulysses out of her lap and onto the seat beside her. And then she reached up and crossed her hand on the left side of her father's chest. And she felt it, her father's heart beating there inside of him. It felt very certain, very strong, very large, just like Dr. Meacham had said. <gasps> Aww. So he was described as being sad. But look at his face right now. Does he look sad? No. No. They look like they have a bond between them. And look right here. There's the little squirrel. put his two hands back on the steering wheel at 10 and 2 o'clock and the three of them, Flora, her father, and the squirrel, traveled the rest of the way home in a strange and peaceful silence. The only noise was from the windshield wipers. They hummed back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, singing some sort of out of tune song. The squirrel slept and Flora Bell Buckman was happy. It's like the windshield wipers was also a heartbeat. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. I think you should be in your space right now. Thank you very much. All the way in your space. Chapter 42, Foreboding. Her father pulled the car into the driveway and cut the engine. That means turn the car off. The windshield wipers let out a surprise squeak and then froze mid-wave. The rain slowed to a trickle and the sun came out from behind a cloud and then disappeared again. And the smell of ketchup melded with butterscotch rose with a gentle persistence from the seats of the car. Here we are, said her father. Yep, said Flora, here we are. 412 Belgrade Avenue. It was the house that Flora had lived in for her whole entire life. But somehow was something was different about it. Something had changed. What was it? Ulysses crawled up onto her shoulder. She put her hand on him. The house looked squeaky somehow, almost as if it were up to no good. Foreboding. That was the word that popped into Flora's head. The house seemed full of foreboding. 
Do inanimate objects, couches, chairs, spatulas, etc., absorb the energy of the criminals, <gasps> the wrongdoers among whom they live? The criminal element had questioned in a recent issue. It is, of course, entirely unscientific to assume such a thing, but still, we are forced to admit that in this woeful world, there exists objects with an almost palatable energy of menace. <gasps> spatulas that seemed cursed, couches that contained the literal and metaphorical stains of the past, houses that seemed to perpetually groan and moan for the wrong that it contained in their environs. Can we explain this? No. Do we know that ex criminals exist? Yes, we do. We are terribly and unfortunately certain that criminal that the criminal element will for better will forever be among us and the arch nemesis thought flora the arch nemesis will forever be among us too <gasps> ulysses's arch nemesis who's the arch nemesis the mom. The mom. mom she is the enemy Why she can't fly? arch nemesis is in that house right now <gasps> Do you remember the darkness of 10,000 hands, Flora asked her father. Yup, said her father. He welded 10,000 hands of anger, greed, and revenge. <gasps> he is the sworn enemy of the Incandisto. He's Incandisto's arch nemesis, said Flora. Right, I tell you what, the darkness of 1,000 hands better stay away from our squirrel. Eh, eh, he honked the horn. Home the warrior he shouted home of the cat conquering superhero squirrel <gasps> ulysses puffed out his chest let's go said flora we have to do it we have to face the arch nemesis, nemesis. right bravely forward said her father and he honked the horn again eh, eh. So ladies and gentlemen, we see a different side of dad in this reading. We see that dad is actually kind of like a happy guy. He smiles. He smiles. But you know what? Something just flipped ahead. Chapter 43 just flipped ahead. Chapter 44. <gasps> You don't even want to see what I see. I have no idea what is going on. Till Monday.